Now let's create a resource account using PowerShell. There are three required PowerShell modules that need to be installed. That's the Microsoft Exchange Online PowerShell module, the MSOL, also known as Microsoft Online or the Azure Active Directory PowerShell module, and optionally the Skype for Business Online PowerShell module. I've already got those installed and I'll leave notes down below the video for you to get instructions on how to install those modules. So first thing we're going to do is capture the credentials of the account I'm using to sign in to Office 365 into a variable called dollar sign cred. Now if you're using multi-factor authentication, I don't think this method works and I'll show you how to work around that on this next command. So now that it's captured the credentials, we're going to connect to Exchange Online. If you have multi-factor, remove this part and you actually don't even need to run this first command. You would just start your new PowerShell session and type connect exchange online. So since it already has my credentials, it'll just go to connect to exchange online and bring everything up. And this will take a moment for it to go through its process. Now that we're connected to exchange online, we can start doing things. Uh, such as defining the mailbox we're going to create. So we've just created a variable here called trmbx, Teams Rooms Mailbox, and we're going to call it cfbonanza at this tenant. So now we're going to create the actual new mailbox. This is the PowerShell command I'm using, new-mailbox, and Microsoft Online Services ID, trmbx. So this is telling uh, exchange that we're going to create an online account with the uh, username that we had defined up here. Creating an alias and then we create a display name that's easier to read. We're letting Exchange know that this is a room and to enable the account and then we're going to set the password which here is in clear text. So you can see right here the password is labpass at word 42. After you create the mailbox go into the admin center and change the password. This will take a moment for the mailbox to be created. And there we go, we've got a created mailbox. Now we need to set some parameters on this mailbox. And that's done in this case by using the set calendar processing command. And we're gonna do it against our newly created mailbox, or that TRMBX. Automate processing, this is the key one here. We're gonna auto accept any meeting invites. So whenever somebody sends a meeting invite to this room, go ahead and automatically accept it. Now this also could be auto-reject if the meeting room is already booked at the time. So if somebody already booked the room and then five minutes later someone tries to book again, it'll reject it. There are a couple other parameters in here that we've set. Um, nothing too exciting there. Go ahead and look up set calendar processing on docs.microsoft.com to see exactly what these stand for as well as a few other options. That command has completed, so we're gonna add another one. I'll show you in a later video exactly where this message appears, but we're gonna add an additional response called this room is enabled for Teams meetings. Please be sure to schedule using Microsoft Teams. It's a little note that pops up when you schedule a meeting and invite the room, so it reminds the users that, hey, this is enabled for Teams meetings. It has a Teams room system installed. So we've got the Exchange Online area done. Now we need to connect to Microsoft Online Service and we're going to pass a credential dollar sign cred that we set up as the very first command in this session. Again, if you're using multi-factor authentication, don't use that minus credential and then it'll pop up a form for you to sign into. We have to use MSOL Service because they're going against Azure and not against Exchange. So we're going to set the account so that the password never expires. And then we're going to have to assign a license. So going to run some commands here. We're going to try to get the licenses, any license that has meeting room in it. We're going to assign a meeting room license to this account. So let's take a look real quick and see what that variable MSOL license SKU, what it got back. So let's take a look and it looks like it got the meeting room license that we have. Now we're going to set the country code for the user account. This is important for licensing to make sure the licenses match in the right geographic region. And we're gonna get the country code automatically based off tenant information. So this get MSOL company information will automatically grab information about the company and one of those values is the country code letter here. 
So we'll get that value and then automatically apply it with set msol user. And now finally, we're going to assign that meeting room license to the user. So add license dollar sign msol license SKU, which we assigned up here. Next and optionally, we're going to connect to Skype for Business Online. You don't have to do this, but there are a few uh, compelling reasons to do this. One is if your device is ever going to join a Skype meeting, you're going to need to go ahead and do this. It also enables the ability to join meetings via URI, often done with cloud video interop. The companies will give you a URI and you'll have to connect to them using that and uh, that's done using the Skype for Business Online engine. So first we're gonna do is get CS Online user to see if that account has been created yet in Skype for Business Online, and it has not. We're now just gonna have to wait until that happens. All right, I've waited a few minutes, so let's see if this is good to go. And there we go, we get some data back, we don't get an error. So the account has now been created in Skype for Business Online. We see that we get data back, but it doesn't mean that the account is ready yet for Skype for Business. We need to scroll up a little here and find something called Registrar Pool and make sure we have a value in there. So where is Registrar Pool hiding? Here it is. We can see that there's no value here. So the account has not been assigned yet to a Skype for Business Online pool. So we're gonna have to wait a little longer until we until we have a value there for registrar pool. And it's been about an hour and the account has been created. And we can run the get CS online user account to make sure we have a value in the registrar pool field. So if I scroll up here and look for it, here we go. We have a value in registrar pool. So now we can run enable CS meeting room, which will enable this as a conference room in Skype for business. So here, this command automatically pulls the registrar pool for us, so we don't have to type anything in. So at this point, we're now enabled for Skype for Business, we're enabled for Microsoft Teams, and we are ready to set up our Teams rooms.